What is good? We're back. We got a full tripod. What up, boys? We got we got KJ. We got Big D. What up, fellas? How we doing? Good, brother. Like that fresh crack? Ready to roll. Ready to roll. Ready to roll, oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today we're gonna hit a little re-rank of the 23 rookie class so we just did the 24 kind of way too early mock draft now we're going to come back and re-rank the 23 class after four weeks of uh of play here so we got a, a quarter of the season we'll do this another month from now and see where we fall with those uh but we are recording week four so this may drop on monday of week five so you know i know everything might change by then but we're we're working off of four weeks of a, of a body of work here so um i'm excited for this we're doing super flex tight end premium uh, kind of rankings tiers here. Um, this was actually a little harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, and, you know, whenever you're doing tiers and rankings, it's hard with, with the double talk kind of action. Like you kind of dock somebody for one thing and then, you know, you could easily come down three guys later and be like, well, you know, uh, you can apply the same thing, but I'm going to keep them there. So that's always the interesting part with me uh, trying. And I think everybody trying to keep it a little honest. Um, so, uh, let's get rolling here. Um, I think tier one, we could say, I think everybody's is probably about the same. I think Bijan and Anthony Richardson, uh, you know, are both in the tier at this point together. If they weren't for you beforehand, I think they are now there's very few people saying maybe a rich over Bijan to start. Now I think I don't, I can't really, I couldn't really necessarily make a terrible argument for you uh, before we started, but now that we're in the season, I certainly can't begrudge anybody. And I think it's, you know, even a lot closer uh, and there, there could be some rationale behind taking Richardson over Bijan. So any disagreement there for tier one being those two guys? No, I, I think you're, you're right on, right on track. There is just that a rich and, and Bijan are both kind of the focal points of their respective offenses. So that's kind of why you could see them in that tier one, just regardless of whoever you have in there is just, they are the offense on their perspective team. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty hard to dispute it. Yeah. Say, same, man. I mean, the only argument is who to take and I think that depends on what night it is, you know, what day of the week it is. Is it a Monday? Is it a Tuesday? You know, that's, that's how I actually draft. So just so everyone knows for future <laughs> yeah. startups, it's depending on what week it is. I use different rankings. Yeah. It's no, Thursday I mean, or a motherfucker. You don't want to draft with big deal on a Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. If I earned that one on one and my, my team was absolute garbage, you know, I, I think I'd probably lean Richardson, but I mean, I don't know. I like, it's 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 a really good problem to have uh this last last year it was a really good problem to have to have the one on one you know uh regardless of what your team looked like whether you earned it whether you got it through trade whatever i mean it was a, it was a great problem to have those honestly one on one one oh two and even for me one oh three was was pretty pretty locked in um at the start of it so I think it was one of those things where this class, like a lot of people were buying 23 picks uh, as of like early 2022. And then as we got closer to the class, they were like, this is actually a really like top heavy class with not a lot of depth in some areas. And we actually now looking back at it, this was a really deep class for talent for your fantasy team. So I think yeah. it was really nice to see this produce the way it, way it did. But I agree with Big D there that if you were a desperate team, like that kind of was bottom tier, like you have to lean with the quarterback just because quarterbacks are always going to carry the most value. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the hellscape of uh, dynasty running backs, you certainly isn't helping your cause. Bijan has been as advertised, so you can't be upset about that. But again, long-term, you know, we're already Brees at the end of year one was sitting out with an ACL. Uh, not that it can't happen to a quarterback because we've already seen Anthony Richardson miss a game. Uh, but you know, it's a lot less likely, um, you know, fields had a thousand yards rushing last year and really just was nicked and, and bumped and bruised. Uh, you know, uh, Hall missed a year of, you know, potential here. And then what now, now finally uh, coming into this. So by the time you're hearing this, Brees Hall might've had 200 yards against the Broncos, he will. Uh, but you know, now they're saying, you know, all restraints kind of off Brees, Brees back, but that o, o line is another story. So anyway, let's keep it moving here. The next guy on the ranking, I think, has kind of you know solidified himself. Um, kind of, I think, gone in a tier of his own for me here. So for for tier two for me, I think by himself, I'm going C.J. Stroud. Now you guys may have this as a bit broader of a tier here, but I'm again, like you guys said, or like KJ said, quarterback is is just 
going to hold value for a long time. And this guy is putting up really good numbers, pretty good indicator that, you know, he's going to be good for the long term at this point from what we've seen, especially missing a bunch of offensive linemen. What we're really seeing is his ability to process a situation. He's got a first year offensive coordinator who's never been an OC before, really out there rolling up good plays. It looks like everything is on the up trajectory for, of course, CJ Stroud here. Um, so thoughts um, on on is everybody in on Stroud here and as young kind of dropped, you know, down a little bit here? Yeah, 100 um, percent for me. Stroud is a locked in three. I, I, I it was a coin flip for me between young and Stroud going into the season. And mm-hmm. it's pretty easy now. I mean, I I think you can still make an argument for young. I still I still think there's there's um, you know, it's not like you're in the minds of Moria, right? Like, you know, there, there's still hope. There's still some light there, but it's, uh, but, but for Stroud, it's like, you're, you're, I don't know, same analogy, right? You're, you're on top of the mountaintop. I mean, you, you see what he can do with a broken offensive line. I mean, the plays are supposed to go through um, Pierce and he's still getting volume, but I mean, it's, it's, it's Stroud that's producing, you know, yeah. we have, we have wide receivers that we were really excited about that are, are performing. And again, it goes back to Stroud who's producing, who's hitting, who's hitting targets. Who's, you know, like you said, he's, he's also getting schemed. He's got some good coaching behind him, but um, so far so good. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I'm putting Stroud in a tier above. I'm not putting them in the same tier at all anymore. Uh, just because what you wanted to see from the two of them, we were supposedly splitting hairs coming into this uh, when we were starting the season, when we were going to see young process reads and be a little bit more developmentally ready as far as we were told coming in. I mean, we're seeing Stroud do it, but I haven't really seen that same polished look from young. I mean, we're seeing Stroud hit windows on time with a banged up offensive line with really a rushing game that's kind of been consistent he, he's been the real deal and young i haven't seen to this point i mean he's not working with as good a wide receiver room as as uh as stroud is but he's making Thielen look good so that's got to say something for him but <laughs> I, I i'm not in on him uh as much as i am in on a stroud but i i always have been so a little chip yeah. on my shoulder Nice. Um, I I will say I had Young with a slight advantage because of the processing and the thinking that it would go, you know, maybe if situations were semi-equal, I would give the nod to to Young. And I think if maybe if Young was in the Texan situation, I don't know how how different it would be. It's hard to say, um, but it seems like a little bit better situation, which nobody thought, you know, I thought that the offensive line would be good for Carolina and then not not really panning out that way. Um, and, you know, the, the weapons, you were a question mark, but clearly advantage Texans and and maybe just Frank Reich and his scheme. And, you know, they kind of got a, a, a new OC and they're, they're battling to see what which scheme is going to be what. And uh, so lo- lots to figure out there. So so Stroud staying in, I, I'm putting him in tier by himself. Do you guys have an expanded tier here for tier two? Uh, I yeah, I do. OK, <laughs> you, you go first. Go ahead, KJ. Uh, so I have Laporta and Nakua both in that tier. Uh, I mean, technically, I, I technically have material above because I think they're locked and loaded starters for a multi-year team. I think there's somebody that you can actually put on your team and feel confident that you're going to get multi-years out of. Uh, Young, I don't feel the same way just because I haven't seen that consistency yet. So, I mean, we've seen highly touted QBs fail and we haven't seen him succeed consistently yet. I mean, I see that, you know, the upside is still there and I still trust the talent. But I, I can't put him in the same tier just because I haven't seen it on a consistent basis. That's really it. Big D, who's in the who's in this tier two for you? Yeah, I've got a little extended beyond those two. I've, uh, I've got uh, A Chain, Gibbs, Young, Puka, and Zay Flowers. Those are that's kind of my tier two. And I mean, honestly, I'm I'm you know I I'm looking at it. I mean, Stroud and A Chain or or, or uh, a Chan, sorry, are are two that I'm I'm really you know really excited about. So maybe I should have uh, should have broke it, but uh, broke it up a little bit. Um, but I I don't know for for me that. You know, I think you t- hit it at the top of the top of the order here. Looking back, you know, this this draft was supposed to be the world's greatest, and then it was going to be like it was super light. You know, you know, good, oh, you you shouldn't have traded all those picks. And now, just looking at it, I'm like, man, I'm 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 thrilled with <laughs> really the top twelve or the at least the top eleven. Um, I'm I'm thrilled with all all these players and and the ones that we're top, talking about here in tier two. I'm I'm extremely thrilled with. I mean, if I moved back from Bijan. And I was able to get um, a chain and 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 young, or a chain and uh, flowers, or 
<laughs> going to get you. Um, any of those, I, I would definitely um, feel okay about that move too. I mean, even though I, I missed out on Robinson by trading out, I mean, I still feel pretty good about, you know, uh, some of these fallbacks here. So personally. Yeah, this was a great rebuild year, uh, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, in my opinion. But uh, uh, you may have to wait for some of the talent. So some people may not feel the same way, but it's definitely there. But I mean, if uh, so, we're going through tier two, which uh, I, I kind of popped some of that talent into tier one. But I mean, uh, a Chan <laughs> and Flowers, JSN, and Young are all my tier two. All right. Well, I'm, 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 so I, like I said, I had Stroud just in this, in a tier by himself. I feel like kind of going up from any of those guys outside of maybe Puka right now would, would cost you a little extra. So I, I put him to go to the quarterback above those guys. So I, I felt like I put him by himself and then kind of mostly of those same guys. I got, you know, a, a pretty expanded tier three here with Puka, Zay, Gibbs, JSN, and A chain, Achan. Uh, <laughs> in there um you know I don't, I don't know what to call them these days um Liberace, i don't know uh, league uh, winner yeah league winner uh possibly artist formerly known as ha um so you know it's I, and i don't have young in there and i'm but i'm leaving gibbs and jsn in there you know so it's again this is part of the little bit of a double talk of like well you really haven't seen it from those guys yet but like i i i in my plums, I I know it's there. Uh, we just haven't seen the usage be like we want it to be. And Bryce just seems like it might be a situation where it may be a year or two until we see a, a bit more of a, of a pop. I still have confidence in him. I don't mind trading for him. Um, I'm not out on him by any means. He'd just be in the next tier for me. Um, so that's kind of where, where I'm at with those guys. Obviously, you know, I think... You know, given I think you got to put Puka up in there. I think you got to put A Chain up in there. Um, <laughs> he's, just, he's got you got two beers open. Um, damn right, I was ready. So, has a, anybody feeling some type of way about JSN or Gibbs? Really, it seemed like everybody was still kind of confident in them, but not starting to waver a little. Or was there any thoughts there? So JSN was always going to be kind of a, a later in the year towards next year play. And, and everybody who is trying to push him up as like, he's going to dominate targets right off the bat was trying to sell you, you know, uh, oceanfront property in Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> it, it just doesn't work, man. Uh, he, he's going to be a second half of the year and into next year play. The talent will win out. We have seen it on the field. Garrett Wilson has already come out and said that he's the best receiver that was in that class with people that are out here already dominating. You know, uh, I mean, we're going to see it. It's just, it's not right now. They're not utilizing him right. I think mm, there's going to be a 100%. correction, uh, but I, I mean, we, we have to wait and see it. But I trust in the talent and I know that the draft capital, the talent, it all lines up. I, I, I'm not worried. Uh, he's staying in my tier two. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move to the tier three then. Uh, Big D, hit me with the the third tier for you. Yeah, I mean for the third tier, I've kind of I've got Addison, Spears, Charbonnet, Kincaid, Spears. and uh, Tank Dell and Mims. That's that's my Ooh. tier tier Ooh, three. Spicy so, Spears, man, I'm 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 all about it, brother. I, he's I love he, it. Lo he looks good in his opportunities. I mean, you you think of when you think of Tennessee, you think of Derrick Henry, you think of running, you think of, you know, you think of those things. You think of gritty. Um, he represents that to me, and I mean, it's one of those things where if you know, I I, I put him at twelve on purpose because if I'm a championship team and I'm just looking to add to my, to my coffers, right? Like Spears on my bench. I have the, I have it there. I have the, the ability to, to let him sit and simmer. And he's already proved it to me just, just from the touches that I've watched the, what I've seen. And then knowing the opportunity that lays in front of him, you know, I hope Henry stays healthy the whole year. This is not uh, like I'm, I'm hoping for an injury. I, I, I hope he stays healthy because I think they can both eat. And uh, I think he, as it continues to ramp up, will will show that. So so you're hoping for a Henry injury. Don't lie to me. Uh, uh, I, no, 
Uh, no, uh, what we've seen is that this is one of the first running backs that Tennessee has taken that is actually eating alongside Henry. It used to be mm-hmm. Henry dominating, and we're actually seeing him, you know, carve away a role himself, which is great. Like, I mean, I wish I had the stones to move him up into the tier you do. Uh, <laughs> I think he's not afraid. He's he doesn't need to buy a dog. He's he's Let's- chill. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. I just traded away Spears on one of my leagues. I have a very hefty amount of Spears on across Same. all my dynasty leagues, but mm-hmm. I just traded him away uh, for Walker, and I still feel terrible about it. <laughs> well, I think you did all right there, uh, but yeah. yes, I, I yeah, you guys saw the trade. Yeah, I do love some Spears, um, and I will. I, I I miss Laporta in my in my tier three. There, uh, he was at the bottom. I I. Um, so he is, he did make it in there. Um, so I didn't mean okay. to exclude him. Um, so, uh, KJ, your tier three, uh, my tier three is Kincaid Gibbs and Addison. Uh, that, those are the only three that I believe that I, I'm still a firm believer in the talent. We just need to see more, uh, as far as utilization goes Gibbs. I'm a little bit shaky on, but I'm still firmly believing that they're going to turn this around. I mean, the, the offense, um, as a whole, I think it's going to expand a bit. And I think that Gibbs is actually going to get a solid role, uh, like kind of expanded. He has a really good target share, which is what we wanted when we came into this. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just, you know, Montgomery, we knew he was going to have a role. We didn't know it was going to be this good, like uh, Jamal Williams plus plus, right? Like he he actually is just better in that role than Jamal Williams was last year. Uh, I think Gibbs, they have a plan for him. They want to roll him in slowly. Uh, We all hate it. And here we are living this life that, you know, they're dealing with. So, um, but Addison, I I do feel like he kind of went into the doghouse a little bit. So we kind of took a step back. We saw his role increase and then he missed some pass protection, I think is what I I saw out out of the last couple of games. Uh, And it kind of like pulled him back, but I I think that we're going to get back there. And then Kincaid, I'm not worried. Like, I really do believe that he's going to be up there. Uh, I think that we've seen him translate to the NFL field exactly as we wanted him to. He's in an above average, if not elite offense. So time is really all I'm looking for as far as Kincaid goes. So, yeah, they're solidly in my tier three. Yeah, this is my my tier three is Kincaid, Young, and Addison. And it's kind of the bunch that, you know, I still believe in the talent. Addison just not quite getting the usage that we want, but has been good in it. Um, and, And again, this is a little double talk because you know some of those other guys up there aren't uh, are in the same boat uh but Kincaid right there the first game this week where he out snap knocks um you know by by I believe one or two snaps so seems like it it was been a slow build and it is coming so I, I agree with you there the talents there and Bryce Young might be a minute but still believe in it I think they'll get it right uh Reich will get things ship righted and and they'll figure some things out um, mostly along that offensive line and get them a number one target right now. You just don't have that, um, you know, you don't have that dog. Um, so uh, a lot of, a lot of interest there in, in my tier three. So uh, let's, let's kind of move in. We're out of basically round one, essentially. And we might, for some of you might even be a little deeper there. Quentin Johnston, not in anybody's uh, round one anymore. Uh, has slipped down so we we shall see where the slip uh goes to here so um yeah he's in the green room right now sweating it you can (laughs) see the camera's panning to him yeah he's like damn i shouldn't have came to draft night (laughs) yeah he should have been on draft day yeah yeah (laughs) right now he's just hoping last chance you picks him up um (laughs) all right um who wants to go first in their next tier all right so we're going tier four i've got uh musgrave downs rice reed Rashawn Johnson, uh, Kendra Miller, and Michael Wilson. Woo! Big spicy tier there. It's so a big one. Yeah, all my tiers, tiers are pretty. Yeah, I've got basically five tiers for the top top twenty five. Uh, no Quentin Johnson in that tier. I see. He's not. He's in the next one. Yeah. Michael Wilson moving up for you like that. Uh, was there was there any any drama in this tier of consideration in or out or or um, hard I'm, I'm, hard hitting? I, questions or the guys that you're still teetering on rice is one of those guys um i just you know he's 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 so talented he's in the talented offense um but i i don't know there's just something about it that it just it it doesn't 
and, and it could just be um, all the lamps, all the <laughs> KC lamps as we call them on the, on the running back room. But now it's KC lamps in the, in the, uh, in the wide receiver room as well. Like, you know, you're taking darts at, at everybody that's not named Kelsey there in, in Kansas or Mahomes, obviously uh, in Kansas city. And so maybe that's a, a little bit of it, but um, yeah, I mean, he, he was a little bit in, and um, I, and then of course, Michael Wilson's probably the biggest jump for me. Um, I mean, Atlanta, Atlanta, Arizona is, is uh, still going to be in the top 10 picks. I'm pretty, pretty certain we'll see once Kyler gets back, but, but I mean, the way that they're using that offense, the way that it's rolling through Dobbs, the, 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 the usage that um, Michael's getting and, and the way that he looks, uh, you know, just, just watching him off the ball. Um, I just, I, I really, really like uh, the fact that he is a wide receiver and not a gadget player. Like, um, mm-hmm. Uh, that they're not nothing wrong with being a gadget player, but I think that if you're not playing the straight wide receiver position, then there's something else going on there, right? Like you've you've got some potential some short shortfalls in, in my in my book. So, anyways, that's that's why Wilson jumped up there for me. I, I mean, Hollywood's doing great, but but Wilson is a is a mainstay. I think um, yeah. even with all the targets, the tight end position. So, right. And that seems to be it tapered off for a minute, came back a little, but it seems like Michael Wilson's been fa- fairly constant and had a great game versus San Fran in this last uh, week. So, KJ, how about your next tier? So, my tier four is actually just uh, Tank Dell, Marvin Mims, and Luke Musgrave. Uh, those are the ones that I, I believe are actually going to have a really big push from what we've seen. I was tempted to put downs in this tier, but he just barely sits in the next tier for me. Yeah, I, I really believe in what I've seen. Just statistically, we've seen Musgrave's utilization actually show that he's going to be a primetime top 12 tight end. As far as tight end premium goes, that's what you want to do while people are underperforming. Got knocked out with a concussion on a game that I think he would have blown up on. I think that that's you know, who you're trying to target. Tank Dell had a depressed game. Again, who you want to target. These are people that I could just say, you see the utilization. You just need uh, you just need them to actually hit what we know they can do. Uh, and the second half is going to say a lot for this tier. So, um, yeah, those are the ones I believe in the most as far as tier four. Yeah, um, my tier four is Tank Dell. I'm going to put Quentin Johnston still in there. Um, I'm going Marvin Mims and Rashi Rice here. Um, Quentin Johnson staying in there because you know I, I do like what the potential talent is. The, the the guys who are built like that with the the yak ability that he has, he still needs to learn, and we kind of knew that. Um, but he's going to be thrust into a little bit bigger role here with with Mike Williams missing some time. Palmer we know is good, uh, but Mike Williams is going to get a little on the job learning, or Mike uh, Quentin Johnson rather going to get some on the job mm-hmm. learning. Um, and I think, you know, you'll see s- some good and bad. Um, and I'm not, I'm not out on Quentin Johnston, uh, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, he's not in my first round anymore. So um, certainly he was, he was kind of the last of the receivers for me through this whole process in the first round. And now he has dropped in uh, with some of those second round receivers. Tank Dell has been, been great for the most part. Um, and Marvin Mims and Rashi Rice. I mean, look, Rashi Rice is, um, his targets per route run is 0.37. That's tied with Devontae Adams um, for, uh, you know, just that's, you know, obviously he's not playing nearly as much as Devontae Adams. He's not putting up fantasy points like Devontae Adams because if he was, he would have been, in, you know, up there with Puka. Um, but, you know, the way that 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 uh, the Chiefs are deploying their wide receivers, they're kind of rotating five guys in trying to figure out who's who. MVS, I don't think, is long for that team. And then kind of who takes over. Sky Moore hasn't really grabbed a hold of anything. It feels like Rashi Rice could be the guy who grabs a hold of something. Um, and when he's out there, the targets per route run. Now he's his usage isn't up there with the highest in the team. But when he's out there, he's targeted, which is you know something that we like to see. And then on the MIM side of things, also it feels like it's just a matter of the time. You know, trying to uh, when it, when the genie gets out, I don't think you're going to be able to put put him back in the bottle. There is you know the old what what what's uh who is the genie in the original Aladdin. Uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. It was ten thousand years. We'll give you <laughs> the crick in the neck. I think once he gets out, you're not putting him back in. You know, he's averaging twenty six point nine yards per reception. That's first for anyone with double digit targets. Uh, six point three seven yards per route run. That's first again with anyone with double digit targets. He doesn't have a ton of targets, so it is inflating some of those numbers. But um, you know. 26.8 ADOT first again with double digit targets, eighth in PFF wide receiver grades, and 1.07 fantasy points per route run. That's again up near the top with people with double digit 
um, target. So, you know, there, there's a lot good going on with Mims from the uh, glasses pusher perspective. Um, so, you know, I think it's, I think go get your Mims and your rice now. Cause I think at some point it might be a whole lot harder um, where, you know, t- tank Dell's probably been getting a little hard, had the down game. So maybe you get, get back in a little, but those are kind of the four there for me. Yeah. Um, as far as Rashi rice goes, love the take. Gotta love that. Uh, this really smart guy I knew two weeks ago said you should go trade Sky Moore for Rashi Rice straight up. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody can pull that up. It's some guy we know. I'm sure uh, we can find <laughs> it in the tape. Oh, absolutely. Go go check the timeline. Uh, uh, but either way, um, yeah, I, I can't. Uh, so Mims definitely in that tier for me, only because we've seen him absolutely dominate as far as the advanced metrics go. Uh, he just needs more utilization i i I feel like i should drink every time i say utilization every time i'm on here but uh we just need more oh boy (laughs) (laughs) for Uh, those of you on the podcast before we started (laughs) he said every time we mispronounce kj said every time we mispronounce a chain's name he was going to drink um so if you've been watching we've been having that or listening so anyway um Either way, so as far as Mims go, we, we see it. It's translating. It, with Rice, the only reason I can't put him in this tier, in fact, I have him actually much deeper than probably a couple of you, but Ooh. I can't put him in this tier just because Reed. Like, he just has this thing with rookie wide receivers where we will see them pop. I mean, with Sky Moore, we really didn't see it until late in the season, but they could just go to irrelevance. All of a sudden, he just decides that he wants to give veterans run over the rookies and he wants them to develop. Uh, and that's just bad for fantasy. So uh, I think that that could happen, but I'm, I'm just hoping that, you know, the talent wins out. He's definitely the most talented wide receiver as far as I'm concerned outside of Kadarius Tony, if he didn't have glass hamstrings. <laughs> sure. And Tony's up there and some of those targets per route run as well. Yeah. Uh, those guys are kind of right there. Could end up being there two wide receivers kind of moving forward potentially yeah. in the next year. Um, but so no, no Seahawks uh, hat on there with, with big D, but he no Charbonnet in this tier. Whew. Charbonnet was in tier three for me. Oh, uh, right under Spears. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear I that. Still, yeah. I still have him. I still have him pretty high. I know that. Um, I know that uh, the expectation going in and, and kind of what we talked about, Casey, in the summer when we when we broke down, what, you know, Kenny Three Sticks versus um, ETN and the situations there. Like, I, I still see that Charbonnet's usage is is fine to me. Like, he's a league winner if, if anything happens to, to Three Sticks. Like, you know, um, but, but even if nothing happens to him, I, I still think that there's going to be plenty of opportunity in that offense. Um, it's they, they're on their literally on their second, uh, second string tier offensive line right now. They don't have right. any single starters out there, um, at the same position that they were, they were. So, um, you know, we talk about all these offensive line worries and, and woes throughout the whole league and, and the Seahawks are right there. And so when you say that, I mean, obviously your, your running game is also going to take a little bit of a hit. I think the offense is taking a little bit of a hit, as you can see by some of those points scored. But but when they're rolling, man, they're rolling. And, and, and I think Sharp is 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 he's. He's right there for me. He's he's right around that uh, you know, end of the second round now. Maybe maybe he dropped a tad. Um, but that's more not so much because of the way I feel about him, it's the way I feel about other players like Spears. You know, they, yeah. they popped up just because of what I can see in the future for them. So Right. Yeah, Charbonnet was hanging on on a you know, right on the edge here. I could have easily put him in this tier. He starts my next tier off, but and I wonder if a little bit of that um you know, Seahawks line injury feels like it favors the creativity and of, of Walker a little more than it does Charbonnet as well. Like, you know, not, not to say that Charbonnet can't, could, can't exist in this system, but like the, the impromptu, like I can break 16 tackles and run around the other side with Kenny Walker uh, feels like it's a little more suited for a banged up line. I mean, obviously I think it would be great for him if they weren't, uh, but doesn't seem as much as Charbonnet style. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I would say like, you know, Kenny is, is more of like a, like a, a disco fever, like a, you know, like a something, something jazzy, something groovy. And, and Sharps is just hard hitting, man. It's yeah, like, he's just a straight, no, 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 he's going to, he's going to take you, take you out. Um, sure. And so, so yeah, I, I do agree with that. I, I think that, um, that um, Kenny's, 
skill set is really on display right now because it has to be. Uh, he, he's bouncing every which way, man. I mean, he looks he looks great. Um, but but uh, Sharps is is not. It, there's not as many holes in, but when they are, man, if if he's in there and there's a little slimmer of daylight, he's he's slamming it and he, he's looking good. So don't 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 drop him too far, folks. He's, yeah, he's he's still there. Well, I know you only have kind of one more tier left, so we'll get you on the back end of this round of tiers here, Big D. Uh, I'll go first. I'm going Charbonnet. Um, keeping Kendra in here. I'm going Roshan, and I'm going Spears uh, in the next tier. That takes me to about 20 guys. Um, how about uh, KJ? You're your tier four right now is that right yeah absolutely well actually this is tier five so uh yeah tank and mims and musgrave were on their own tier four but uh as far as tier five charbonnet is the top just because you know they have been getting him involved i do believe that there is going to be somewhat of a transition to a closer split uh but i mean kenny kenny walker is doing nothing to lose this job i mean they have a banged up line and he's still producing and he's still the best rb on tape as far as i'm concerned so there's no reason to move away uh but tier five charbonnet miller downs spears roshan and Jaden Reed. I'm putting Jaden Reed in that tier uh, yeah. just because when sure. we see him flash, it definitely shows that he's definitely somebody that's going to be a staple of this offense moving forward. So, um, yeah. And I mean, Miller, I, I'm being stubborn <laughs> at this point because we have not really seen anything right. uh, to, to make him stay up in that upper echelon, like mid second round. Uh, but he was a back end first round top of the second round. So he still has slid, but this is the tier that I'm targeting in trade right now. Like this, these are the people that I'm trying to add because they haven't exactly, you know, sup, you know, like uh, supplanted the people ahead of them. They haven't exactly like drawn a lot of attention and people that right. might be looking to get out. So this is a good entry point for, for tier five for me. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. You were citing it being deeper and like like you said, you might have to wait for it. But as we get it, you know, I, I said at the top of this, this was tough because, man, this whole second round are guys that I'm targeting almost all of these guys in trade. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, some people are, are like it. It needs to be now and it didn't happen. So I'm out, um, which, you know, sometimes could be the right move and, and sometimes can be the wrong move. It's, you know, kind of a sliding scale. So, uh, yeah. I I'm, I'm keeping Miller in there too. Again, that's kind of the double talk thing with not, not producing, but we kind of knew once he went to the situation, Jamal and then, and, and uh, Kamara maybe missing less games than we anticipated with only three. Um, and then the MCL never seemingly uh, getting a hundred percent with Kendra here. Um, so, uh, you know, like the talent, like the skill set. So still, still hanging on, uh, with, with Kendra as well. So just uh, watch that TCU tape on repeat, man. Yeah. Big D, why don't you, why don't you take us home with your last tier? And then I think do you have, you got one more tier KJ or two. Yeah. One more tier for me. Yeah, Same. So big D go ahead. Yeah. So my last tier is just, and that would be if we're ranking them out individually, it's 24 and 25 and that's Quentin Johnson, Michael Mayer. Um, you know, Quentin's <laughs> dropped considerably for me. I, I was, I should have looked this up pre, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that I had him pretty low, um, below Flowers and Addison to begin with. But it, he um, he's not my kind of player, to be honest. I wasn't. I'm not a big Mike Williams fan either, so maybe that's part of it. They're similar. Um, I, I I tend to tend to stay away from that kind of player on, on most of my builds. So maybe that's a little bit of it. But I, I just it never sold me, and it's still not. There's nothing selling. And and then with Mayer, same same thing. Um, is he, he was a little bit lower. I think I had him under, um, uh, I know I had him under Kincaid. I think uh, Laporta was pretty close there. Um, mostly cause of Matt always talking in my ear about him, Laporta, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, it, he just hasn't had the usage, man. I mean, he, he, he looks great blocking, but dude, he, he just hasn't, right. he's not being, he's not out there and, uh, and, and it's a tight end. So they're, they're going to develop at, a, at their own rate, but, you know, with Laporta um, having the success, success that he's had and Kincaid looking decent out there and just not hearing even like crickets from Mayer, it's just, it's really hard for me to hold him up above some of these other opportunities. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, he's probably, he's been my, I haven't mentioned him yet. He, I liked him a lot. He was, you know, I had Kincaid, Laporta, Mayer, all similar, maybe Kincaid just a tear, a hair up, but I had, you know, it was like, well, if I'm not upset missing Kincaid, cause I'm fine with mayor or Laporta as well. Um, but you're right. I mean, I, I, you can't, I can't really justify mayor. And that again, I've said it a million times, a little bit of double talk. Cause I got Kendra still up there. Um, but 
just the fact that there's no usage, it seems like, you know, we just need something to, to give or change there to, to have it. Kendra, I wasn't necessarily expecting it. Mayor, I thought he could be third in the pecking order um, pretty early and often. And it still could happen. And I still like the talent. Nothing's changed with the talent yet. It's not like he's been out there and been terrible. Uh, it's just 35% going to Adams and like 34% going to Myers. And, you know, it's just Jacobs is getting the other little bits. And then, you know, nobody cares about the rest. So, um, yeah. So hit me with your last tier, KJ. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for tier six, uh, we have Rashi Rice, Michael Mayer. I still have him pretty close up there. And then Quentin Johnston. Uh, and then I follow it with my honorable mentions for 25 and 26 with my, uh, Michael Wilson and Jonathan Mingo. Uh, I, I think that, you know, unless Carolina adds an actual bona fide wide receiver one, Mingo still has the opportunity to kind of push up the ranks. Uh, Michael Wilson, we've seen just kind of then develop. And I actually think that, uh, Marquise Brown could be somebody on the trade block to move off of Arizona. So that might be a little projection for me that Michael Wilson might be a little prevalent, but Michael Mayer, like you touched on big D uh, we've seen good blocking from Mayer, which is actually the one knock that we were worried about coming in. Uh, it just sucks that it really didn't translate to receiving chops yet. The fantasy, I, I think the fantasy side of it is coming. Uh, but that's hard to really say because we've seen absolutely nothing. I believe he goose egged last week. So I think he has we need two more. There are two targets on the season, and one of them is a two point conversion. Uh, and this so. is an offense that coming in was like, we're going to make a focal point out of the tight end. And like they right. took a tight end super high, and he was like a dominant tight end in the receiving side for Notre Dame. Like, we, I don't know why this didn't translate immediately. I mean, tight ends usually develop slowly, but we've seen other tight ends like Laporta and Kincaid actually have usage coming in uh, i mean i had uh mayor above laporta coming in and that's a big l for me so uh, that sucks but you know outside of that rashi rice for all the reasons you said we've seen more involvement i think he's well uh well above supplanting sky Moore, who i thought actually would have a bigger piece coming in um but yeah that's that's pretty much my tier quentin johnson i was actually tough press to keep him in my 24 but i, I think you could <laughs> you did it i think i yep. did it yeah <laughs> Um, so sharp for me, it's Charbonnet or, uh, uh, sorry, that was the last one. Uh, Josh Downs, Jaden Reed, Michael Wilson, Musgrave and Mayer in this tier. I think Musgrave could easily be up a little higher here. I, I agree with everything you said when you had him where he was, I think he, it's fine putting him there. Definitely a trade target for me. All the usage indicator markers were all there. Um, and I, I think he, he will break out at some point. Uh, Michael Wilson, like you guys all stated already, has been great. I feel like he's part of this organization. Uh, listening to that broadcast this past week against the Niners, they were saying that he has learned all three posi wide receiver positions um, already. Super smart guy. Just seems like he's going to be their guy for, for this regime of like, look at this guy we dug up and how how great he is, whether it's you know Kyler moving forward or whoever is their quarterback. Will Hollywood be there? I think this is the last year of his contract. Um Seems like to keep Kyler happy, maybe he will be because um, that's his boy. But, you know, who knows? But either way, Michael Wilson at the usage that he's getting right now, the smarts that he has and tied to this um, Gannon uh, kind of organization here seems like he's, you know, got really, really in a good position here to excel and really climb up the charts here. So like Wilson a lot, Reed got that um, has fire in his has had the win with the two touchdowns. You're right. Um, and then downs the usage. We thought maybe it would take a year, but you know, again, the usage targets route participation is all extremely high. Um, really, really, really enjoying it there. And then honorable mention on the next guy would be Mingo. Uh, unfortunately, we just haven't seen it. It's easy to kind of write him off because the Panthers have gone in another direction or not in another direction, but in the, in, in the direction where you didn't think they, you know, everything has gone the wrong way essentially for the, for the Panthers this year where you thought maybe there was a chance that shit, maybe they might even be in, in a weird contention position for this kind of wide open division that they had. But, it, you know, it seems like they're going to be a, you know, a very hard press for just a few wins there uh, with, with how it's looking. So kind of easy to write them off, but you know, there are some fun things about him. Uh, I, I thought he kind of had like a, a Debo esque quality to him. If, if you could get that kind of usage out of him, uh, but also had some field stretching ability um, so he's, he's a very interesting player. I'm not saying I'm out, uh, but definitely mayor and him have, have slid, slid, uh, a good bit for me. Um, so 
Quentin Johnson, Mayer, and um, Panthers receiver Mingo, probably kind of our biggest sliders here. Maybe I guess Charbonnet would so be in there too. I got yeah. so much crap for saying that Adam Thielen was going to be a thing this year. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> well, so Andy Dalton there. certainly made him a thing when he was in there. And, you know, I think, you know, it's just, it's, it's old reliable there. Somebody who's a pro's pro. Um, I think, I think Big D on the, you know, when we were talking about this last night, just kind of getting a feel for who had who wear a little bit. Um, I think you made a good point of, you know, Stroud's guides are separation machines, it seems like. And it seems like Bryce is working with guys whose separation is very limited, it seems. And that's a that's a tough transition uh, for dare you. quarterbacks to make, right? <laughs> I think DJ Chark is going to be that guy once he's healthy. Yeah, but... Uh, you know, so I, I thought that was a very good observation um, and a, w- a good way to put that is like Absolutely. Tank Dell, we knew was an elite separator. Would it translate? And it has. Mm-hmm. And Nico Collins was kind of built as like you're kind of prototypical alpha number one. And now he's producing like that. Whereas, you know, we thought, you know, Terrace Marshall a few years ago could potentially give you that. We didn't know what Mingo would give you. Now you got old out Adam Thielen and Shark's been hurt. So, you know what it's, it's been a bit of a bummer plus no protection uh but you know same a little bit for for stroud there so they were what they thought they were <laughs> <laughs> for sure uh any anything else from anybody before we wrap up and, and close up shop on this 23 re-rack i don't i don't think so i mean i think i think mingo for me it's probably down a little bit further i'd still have Le- levitz i'd still have um I'd, I'd still have a few, a few above them, to be honest. So I, th- I think you labeled that pretty well. Um, I'll, I'll say, you know, we're, we're re-ranking this. Um, I think we're going to have a schedule, right? We might do this again. Yeah, we'll do on. It, uh, week eight, probably. Yeah, but but I think you know, um, the, this early part of the season, it's really hard. Um, it's really hard not to overreact, but 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 it's 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 important for everyone to note that these defenses are still figuring it out too. Um, the offenses are still figuring it out. There, there's a lot of football that we played. Um, and, and from a performance perspective, you know, going off your gut and what you see, um, I think that's why it's really important to watch some of the film and watch some of these games, not just on red zone, um, you know, or, or at least catch, catch some of this stuff because um, what they're doing off the ball and, and the way they're looking is going to, I think accelerates the future of, of some of these picks. And so when we talk, when we talk, or at least I'll, I'll say for myself, like we were talking about Michael Wilson, like it's not just what he's doing on the field. It's not just what the spreadsheets telling me. It's also what I'm seeing with my eyeballs when I watch this game and watch right. how he's playing. And like you brought up the, you know, the, the, the new regime and what they're talking about with them there. And, and some of the, the, the visiting teams have talked about him too. And, and if you can get the other teams talking about you, then that, sparks my interest and i start looking at that a little bit more does that mean he's a league winner no that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying he's definitely on my radar a lot more than what he was you know say uh july <laughs> so. sure 100 percent. kj uh no that pretty much wraps it up for me um unless these trends continue then pick up jake hayner like immediately <laughs> <laughs> Jay Kaner, let's go. Uh, he has the great Derek Zoolander look for all like the NFL stuff. For sure. For sure. Uh, the uh, the Broncos, uh, uh, what's his name? McLaughlin? Um, is that his name? Yeah. He, he Sarah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> that animal shelter uh, commercials. <laughs> yeah. um, he looks like, you know, he's got a little bit of juice. I don't think he's you know, going to make any any top 24, but he looks 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 fun in this past week. Um, and, I... And, we know Javante is coming off an injury and these kind of things with quads, calves, hamstrings, when you're coming from an injury like that can happen. So he might have some, some usage here. Moving Trade forward. him this week right now. Like seriously, he's a, such a trap, honestly, in my opinion. Oh, but, I mean, he could be, but he might, he might get, you know, this might be week five. So he might get good usage that week. Uh, that's Javante what I'm saying. Out, out, they are playing the jets, which could be a bummer. Um, yeah, it's just there's people that think that Javante is going to be sitting, which he very well could. But I mean, I think that he's his value is only going to go down. Is I guess is what I'm saying. This, this sure. is a perfect pickup and flip. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Five star review if you're on the podcast. If you're really feeling us, you can hit us with the five dollar holler on Discord. You get three extra shows a month plus access to the Discord. Uh, lots of fun stuff going on there. We do usually one month, once a month, we'll kind of watch a game, do a Discord hang, 
Uh, everybody who wants to hop on can hop on that. We're doing one this week with uh, Big D hosting. I'll be on there. So we appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for checking everything out. Like I said, we got a we got a fun schedule. We'll be doing this again in about 30 days. We'll be doing the 24 mock again in about 30 days. So we're trying to keep things a little cyclical around here and just check movers, shakers, fallers, risers, all that good stuff. So appreciate you guys. KJ, uh, thank you so much. Big D, good to have you back. It's been a minute. Uh, but we'll be seeing you guys uh, on the Monday show. So uh, be sure to check that out. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>